star. Peripheral blood circulation disorder. Peripheral blood circulation disorder. What does peripheral blood circulation means at all? First of all, peripheral blood, because multiple people thought that peripheral blood circulation means in extremities, in arms and legs. It's wrong. Peripheral blood circulation disorder, not disorder. Peripheral blood circulation means in tissues, in tissues, in cells. Arteriole, mid arteriole, pre-capillar, capillar, post-capillar, post mid-venal, venal. This is peripheral blood circulation. This could be have some disorders, some pathologies. Which pathologies we can have here? Arterial, one, two, three, four, five, six. Arterial hyperemia, venous hyperemia, ischemia, stasis, thrombosis, embolism. About everyone, we will, we will tell very short definition, types, pathogenesis, signs, and consequences of everyone. Understood? Yes. Observe. Arterial hyperemia, what does it mean? Arterial means artery, arterial side. Hyperemia means more blood, means more arterial blood coming by arterioles. What is the main mechanism of pathogenesis? Dilation of arteriole. Which types of arterial hyperemia could be physiological, pathological? Physiological, for example, when, when we are shamed, ashamed, we redness, become redness. Or we are thinking arterial hyperemia of brain. We are eating arterial hyperemia of small intestine. Physical exercises, arterial hyperemia of muscles, like this. This is physical, physiological, physiological. And also could be pathological. pathological for example, inflammation, allergy, damage. This uh, pathological. Types according to what can lead to arterial dilation could be neurological, neurological, and membranogenous or muscular, muscular, uh, muscular, yes. Neurological, we, have, we know there are two types of nerves which innervate arteries, vasodilators and vasoconstrictors. If we activate vasodilator or inhibit vasoconstrictor, we will lead to arterial hyperemia, dilation. This is neurological, neurogenic. Muscular means some substances lead to, uh, to dilation of arteries. For example, mediators, histamine, prostaglandin, leukotrienes. These uh, we can find in inflammation and allergy and damage. It explains why become redness in case of damage. Understood yet? <clears throat> Which signs we can uh, we can see locally? Redness and heat, um, not heat, increased temperature locally. Why? Because arterial blood is very hot and it's activate metabolism. Understood? Which consequences of arterial hyperemia? Good and bad. Good consequences, it activate metabolism. Bad consequences, if artery is weak, they become damaged, ruptured and bleeding. And if we have here, for example, inflammation, microbes, and arterial hyperemia can take and carry by, by organism spread infection. Or tumors, cancer, also arterial hyperemia spread by, uh, by, uh, by organism. This is arterial hyperemia. Next, venous hyperemia. What does it mean? And it means collection of blood in veins. You have to remember that artery is inflow, venous is outflow. Venous hyperemia, collection of blood in vein due to something prevent outflow of blood in veins. What it could be from outside? Pressure, something pressure, breast. From inside, thrombosis. Or valvular disease of veins, valvular, could be congenital, hereditary. Or heart failure, because heart... Uh, track, attract veins to itself. If heart failure cannot, so will be congestion of vein, of blood in veins. Understood? This is causes. Uh, which uh, main mechanism, or we already said, something prevent outcome. Next, signs, local signs will be bluish, means cyanosis, because of accumulation of deoxyhemoglobin, edema, because water will be accumulated here, 
water cannot go to veins so accumulate their edema and then low temperature because metabolism less which consequences of venous hyper hyperemia good and bad good consequences it prevent infection to be spread bad consequences Less metabolism inhibit metabolism, then it will, it will lead to atrophy of cells and tissues here. This is about venous hyperemia. Next, ischemia. Ischemia is the opposite case of arterial hyperemia. Opposite. If arterial hyperemia, more arterial blood, so ischemia, less arterial blood, come by artery. That's why types according to cause according to cause could be outside artery pressure we call it press ischemia yes due to press pressure or inside artery for example thrombosis abturation we call it abturative ischemia abturation something inside or artery spasm we call it angiospasm problem of the wall of the artery so three types of ischemia, press, obturative, and angiospasm. Ischemia, which signs we will learn? White, pale, no metabolism, pale, understood? Uh, and which, uh, which temperature? Low, coldness, because of uh, multiple metabolism. And paresthesia, pain, sensation. It seems when we lay down, we are sleeping wrong on the arm or leg and we this is ischemia <clears throat> consequences of ischemia uh, if the organ has anastomosis so it's good it's no if no anastomosis to, so consequences of ischemia is bad because it lead to necrosis for example ischemic heart disease then myocardial infarction when it fully closed understood next stasis who is stasis Stasis, stop of blood flow in capillaries here. The blood here in capillaries becomes stopped at all. It's not movement. Due to what? Could be due to ischemia, low blood flow by, by artery, then uh, it lead to stopping. Or arterial hyperemia, low outcome. Or could be could be uh, initially stasis inside capillaries. How it could be? Some, in some cases, some microbes or some toxins, they can change charge of our red blood cells. Plus, minus, plus, minus. And they become adhesive. And they, the, the, they create a colon inside capillary. And it will lead to stopping blood flow. Which uh, consequences of stasis, bad consequences. It will lead to necrosis because capillary the most important part for metabolism, for exchange. Uh, next, thrombosis. What does thrombosis mean? And when we need thrombosis normally? Normally we need thrombosis when we have bleeding. Yes or not? If no bleeding and we get thrombosis, is it normal or not? Not normal. So thrombosis, we give definition. It's early, early blood clotting. Or it's blood clotting without bleeding. It's pathological. To understand thrombosis, we have to understand which seven function of endothelial cells, seven functions of endothelial cells which prevent clotting. We have seven functions. First one. In the tail cells, they synthesize NO and it leads to vasodilation. Next, prostaglandins, prostocyclins, they lead to vasodilation. Next, they have heparin-like receptors. It play a role as heparin, anticoagulant. Thrombomodulin receptors, similar as heparin-like. They, they stimulate TAB, they uh, produce TAB. TAB, who is TAB? Tissue activator plasminogen or plasminogen tissue activator. It's activate, convert plasminogen into plasmin. And plasmin play a role as fibrinolytic. Fibrinolytic. Next, uh, normal endothelial cells, they don't produce thromboxane A2, which lead to adhesion of thrombocytes. 
and they don't produce endothelin, which causing vasoconstriction. If one of these subfunction will be disordered, then we will get blood clotting. And we have to know who is Verkhoff. Verkhoff triad. Verkhoff is a scientist. He said we need three conditions for thrombosis. Which three conditions? Endothelial cells damage means vascular damage. Next, activation of coagulation system. And third, inhibit speed of blood flow. There's three conditions for thrombosis. Verkhoff triad. <coughs> What is the consequences of thrombosis? Bad or bad? Bad. If thrombosis in RT, it will lead to ischemia. If it in vein, it will lead to venous hyperemia. And both are bad. Finally, embolism. <coughs> who is embolism? Who is embolism? What is embolism? Embolism is strange, strange, uh, substance are carrying in blood. This is embolism. It could be air embolism, fat, uh, fat uh, thromboembolism, tissue embolism, bacterial embolism, gas embolism. This is all types of embolism. Air embolism, for example, very very fast. Air embolism in case of de decompression syndrome, when plant damage, for example. In, in the air, rapidly uh, atmospheric pressure become less, our alveoles dilated and ruptured, and air enter to blood. Or in other cases, when we have damage, get damage, subclavial or jugular veins, because they have pressure zero, they will suck air. It will cause air embolism or injection. Air. This is air embolism. Fat embolism. Who is fat embolism? Injection fat. Or in case of uh, fracture of tubular, tubular bones in old age people because bone marrow transferred into fat tissue. Next, gas embolism, also decompression in, in a high altitude because our gas uh, uh, is normally soluble if pressure becomes less, so it becomes unsoluble. unsoluble. Next, tissue embolism, it's in case of cancers, metastasis, tissue in, in blood. Bacterial embolism, what is it? Bacteria in blood. Yes? Yes. The most common type of embolism is thromboembolism. Thromboembolism, what does it mean? We have thrombus and part from this thrombus disconnected and get carried by blood. We call it thromboembolism. Is it dangerous or dangerous? It's dangerous. Why? Most common is deep venous thrombosis among female. This uh, thrombus become disconnect and carried by blood. By which veins it will go and where it will uh, stop? Deep venous thrombosis of the leg. Then vena saphena. Then vena cava inferior. Then right. Atrium, right, ventricle, pulmonary artery, and stopped in lungs. It will lead to pulmonary embolism. Is it bad or bad? Bad. Uh, this is, in general, what I wanted to say about peripheral blood circulation. Thank you very much.